Can you guess which famous scientist's work we looked at in this show? Is Darwin! Actually, that was a rhetorical question. Which shows evolution of man from early life on Burgess, to Kirky, and then finally to me, Homo sex- Sapiens! Homo sapiens. No, Nietzsche. Burgess is most evolved, then me, then- But I come on last. I am most up to date. No, you come on last, so you are last, like in race. Is why it's called human race. I don't get it. <sighs> Every day feels like I'm working with early man. Here's what's coming up on today's show. We'll discover what Darwin's big idea was and how he became known as the Monkey Man. Who he was and why he loved plants so much. When he was around, how a group of workers rebelled by smashing up machinery. Why he was inspired by prehistoric life. And finally, where Darwin's ideas have brought us and made us more in tune with animal behavior. ANTV. Charles Darwin was a man who, despite strong religious beliefs, continues to anger the church right up to this very day. Much like myself. Much like yourself? Nietzsche, you're comparing yourself to Charles Darwin. Yes, my friend. I, too, have angered the church. Uh, Nietzsche, it's not the same. Perhaps I am too controversial for the establishment. Yes, perhaps. Viewers, I will explain. This is how Nietzsche angered the church. No, don't explain. <laughs> yeah, what Nietzsche did? No, it well, wasn't my fault. No, no, of course not. It's easy mistake. Turkey! You saw a cubicle, the sign said occupied. Then someone come out, you thought it was toilet. Kierkegaard! So when the priest asked Nietzsche for his confession, Nietzsche said, I can't find toilet paper. Who told you that? The priest. Nietzsche is not allowed within 500 meters of the church. His natural selection again. Ah, uh, poop! Exactly. Now let's find out from Burgess McPhilbin more about what Darwin's big idea was. Absolutely. What was the idea? What was the idea? What was Darwin's big idea? Darwin's big idea was that every living thing has evolved from slimy, primitive life forms that slivered around the world's oceans billions of years ago. In his great work, The Origin of the Species, he revealed that man is an animal and as such will behave like one. Example, there is a strong connection between humans and chimpanzees, as we both evolved from the same ancestor. Darwin proclaimed that although our genes are very similar, our skills have evolved differently, like driving, a feat that humans have mastered. Whereas monkeys are more relaxed, swinging. Next, Darwin pushed forward the idea of natural selection, or survival of the fittest, as some people call it. He said that when there is not enough food around to keep all animals happy, there is stiff competition, and the losers go hungry. Only the best hunters, strongest fighters, or the most cunning will survive. With his theory of evolution, Darwin revealed for the first time that creatures have evolved over millions of years to adapt to their environments. For example, polar bears were previously brown, but became white to blend in and surprise their prey. Procreation got Darwin fired up. He proved that animals actually evolved special features to make them more attractive to prospective mates. Darwin was lampooned as the monkey man by his critics, but his ideas were to rattle the cage of conventional scientific thought. ANTV. Ah, there you are. Welcome back to the studio. Evolution occurs through natural selection, which in turn is all about survival of the fittest. If a species survives, it passes on its DNA through breeding. If it doesn't, it becomes extinct. Some creatures are naturally adapted to survive the hardships of their environment, while others are not. Allow me to illustrate. 
Kierkegaard benefits from the cleansing effect of the water. And although cold, wet, and unhappy, he adapts well to his new environment. Nietzsche, less so. However, if we then transplant them to another environment, Nietzsche's physical attributes come into their own. Kierke, I don't think we should let Burgess do this part of show anymore. I agree. Burgess, why don't you explain to the viewers who this guy Charles Darwin was? Boji Moe. Who was Darwin? Who was Darwin? Who in the world was this new Darwin? As a child in the 19th century, Charles Darwin was embraced by the natural world. He had an innocent curiosity for all living things. He was an athletic youth who threw himself headfirst into any physical activity. Like hiking, a particular favorite pastime of his. As a teenager, he could always be found performing secret experiments in his garden hideout. From here, he rolled up his sleeves and went to Cambridge to polish up on his religious studies. But Charles was more interested in the social scene. At university, he discovered a passion for field trips. On these trips, he developed a taste for collecting insects and brushed up on his knowledge of plants. All this botanical knowledge sunk in and he was invited on a long voyage across the ocean to be a ship's scientific advisor. Conditions on the boat, the Beagle, were cramped and he had to share an overcrowded cabin with the captain. But when on shore, they had great fun trekking across jungles and collecting all sorts of weird and wonderful creatures that people had never seen before. On his return after five years, the public all wanted a piece of him. And he was mobbed as a boy's own hero. His fame became such that a mountain was named after him in recognition of the scientific heights he had scaled. A fitting tribute to the greatest naturalist that ever lived. TNTV. Collecting insects, in particular beetles, was very popular in 19th century England. It's still very popular in Slobovia. Ah, yes. When we were children, how Nietzsche and I loved to rush down to news agents. Ah, yes! To spend our pocket monies on 200 grams of nutty turnip crunch and a special lucky dip pack of insects. Then we would rush to school to swap with our friends the insects that have not flown away. Happy days! I remember I swapped with Kierkegaard one dung beetle and the woodlouse for his father's radio. How he chased me. Nietzsche, what happened to that news agent? Beetle craze was so popular, they ordered huge stock of Death Watch Beetle, and over a period of months, the shop was eaten by the stock. Well, you know what they say, it's a beetle eat shop world. You're darn tootin. It's another example of natural selection. We'll hear more about Darwin after the break. TNTV.